This episode of Destructoid is brought to you by DICE. Coming up on Destructoid, we've got some brand new Black Ops 2 multiplayer gameplay. I got to slice up some dudes and some boxes and some trees and stuff in Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And according to our market research, you guys want to learn more about boobs. So we will teach you these things, all that and more, right now on Destructoid Live. Welcome to Destructoid, I'm Tara Long. And I'm Max Scoville. To clarify, he wasn't talking about my boobs. No, so if he, oh, they're, they're all gone. They just yeah. left. No. Oh. We do actually have news about boobs, but we also have prizes. Did I just say that sentence it's for my job? It's Free Code job? Friday. It That's the name Code I just Friday. gave it. That's a good one. I like that. I chose Prize Stravaganza, but uh, better. yeah, we love to give away prizes to reward our faithful viewers who take the time to tune in from whatever part of the world you're in, whatever time it is. I know a lot of you guys stay up late over overseas, so uh, whatever you're doing, it's a Prize Stravaganza, and if you're watching us live, then you get presents. And if you're not watching us live, then too bad. You get a free internet show. Uh, we've got codes for Joe Danger Special Edition on XBLA, Arcania 1 and 2 for PC from Good Old Games, two copies of Dust Force for Steam, and then four different humble indie bundles. I think three are from the current bundle, and then one of them's from the last one, which was also good. And uh, these are available, actually, uh, the current one is um, Humble Indie Bundle 5. That's available on humblebundle.com. It's If you're unfamiliar, you pay whatever you want. But if you pay like more than the average donation, it's like you get extra bonus games, but it's all going to different charities and it helps indie devs and it's just, it's nice. They're all cross platforms. So you've got a Mac or a PC, whatever. It's it's a good thing. So these were actually graciously donated to us by fans. So many thanks to Zombie Ninja, Narek, and Florian for the codes. We really appreciate it. We are going to be doing the giveaway a little bit differently today. I know usually we do Twitter or Facebook or some dumb garbage like that, but today we are going to just be throwing the codes into the chat, just dropping them in there, like, like, like chum into the ocean when we're trying to catch sharks. Like Operation Dumbo Drop. Sure. Danny Glover wow. style. Okay, so we have uh, we have Nick in the chat right now. He's going to be collecting comments for us to make fun of later, and also giving you guys the codes when we tell him to. So be nice to whoever's on the Detroit account, which is Nick, and also get ready because news. Yeah, I've got yeah. news. All right, guys, there has been a breast emergency. Somebody. Won't say who. Somebody made a critically acclaimed video game about breasts that fight each other and then had the audacity to claim that people like looking at big, brown, bouncy, bouncy breasts fighting each other all listening with sweat. I don't want to live What's on this planet anymore. Right. Oh, so yeah. Uh, when asked in an interview with Gama Sutra recently whether or not Ninja Gaiden 3's feedback had any effect on the development of Dead or Alive 5, Team Ninja's Yohei Shimbori responded by saying, quote, We were getting feedback from the overseas offices to tone down the sexuality, to tone down the sexiness of the game and of the characters. Considering Team Ninja's games have inspired such profound websites as Gamer Boobs and VideoGameChests.blogspot.com. <laughs> really couldn't afford a domain name for I that? I actually have that issue of Playboy. Oh, God. Um, yeah, it's obvious that fans might not feel the same way, and in fact, according to Shimbori, they don't. They feel the exact opposite. He said the team got a lot of feedback from people who were playing it saying, we want bigger breasts, make the characters more like that. And he said that was kind of surprising. As for whether or not gigantic breasts should coexist in the same realm as serious fighting games, Shimbori says, if you have a solid fighting game system there, there's nothing wrong with having beautiful characters as a layer on top of that. If there wasn't a need for it, people wouldn't have responded to the alpha demo like they did and send us feedback. You want some feedback, Team Ninja? We've got some feedback. Max, show them our artistic mock-ups. We've done a lot of research, We've done a lot of market research about breasts or something, so we made these mock-ups of we don't just want, we just don't want the bigger ones. We want, apparently it says here on these charts that we actually want different kinds of boobs. So I've prepared some prototypes of weird breasts. So here we go. We've got Tina who has the, uh, A six pack. A six pack. Promoting health also. The, or the sexo boobs, which is really just kind of overkill. But welcome to America where we take things like tits and make them awesomer mm -hmm. because we can. Six pack of boobs and a six pack of brew. Yeah. What Guess could be what's better? inside those breasts? Beer. Anyway, moving on, we've got Ayane, who's showing off the oh. the mono boob or perhaps the messenger breast for the woman on the go who needs just one boob that can be swung around to her back. I wonder how her center of mass what works. What did I do at work today? Okay. Uh, and then finally we've got Christy, oh. who has the um, 
Ooh, the, Cthulhu boob. Yeah, the Cthulhu boobs, or perhaps the um, the the uh, cluster breast, the cluster boobs. I don't know. Anyway, um, why did we do, why did we do this story? What was that? What I did instantly we learn regret here? that. Welcome to search engine optimization, kids. Anyway, uh, both hands on the keyboard. Your mom could walk in any minute. Nick, distract these awful kids with some from the nasty breasts with one of the codes. Humble bundle. Yeah, so watch the chat. Dole Nick is going to be throwing those uh, those, those Let's codes. Let's talk about real news now. Okay, some real news. Actually, last night I went to a big, silly Konami press event here in San Francisco, and a few pieces of information were made public to me and everyone else in the room. For starters, we got our first look at a couple collector's editions. We got Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and Zone of the Enders HD Collection. First up, Zone of the Enders HD is dropping on 360 and PS3 on October 30th for 40 bucks, which isn't too bad for two big games. It includes uh, both ZOE games redone in HD, and Zone of the Enders 2 is actually going to be the European version, which includes a bunch of extra levels or something. The special edition of Zone of the Enders HD includes the soundtrack and a 100-page Yoji Shinkawa art book, which um, this doesn't have a price point yet, but if, if the actual game is is 40 bucks. I'm guessing it's not going to be too super outlandish. Uh, both versions, both the regular and the collector's edition, include a demo of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which is cool. Um, this is either a rather desperate attempt to sell the collection or a charming nod to the Metal Gear Solid... Ah, Metal Gear Solid... I bit my tongue, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The Metal Gear Solid 2 demo that was included with the original Zone of the Enders back in 2001, uh, which I still think is like the best Metal Gear game because it was really short, but it was still really fun. You could mess with the mm. guards and you could mug them and stuff. And, uh, Free AOL is still my favorite internet. Yeah, right? That was a great internet. Now, speaking of Metal Gear and the... Not the internet. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is also getting a collector's edition, which will include a soundtrack and a high-frequency blade plasma lamp. Oh, hey, 1997. Yeah, what's up, Spencer's Gifts? Oh, we have I love that place. cool swords now. Uh, this is one of those corny things they would sell at Spencer's Gifts or like a museum gift shop or maybe a Halloween store, except this time it has Raiden's sword in it in the middle. Cool. Uh, there's no price on that yet, but if you like swords and lamps, maybe this is a thing that you want. I don't know. Uh, I actually got to play a bunch of uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, and I will share my impressions of the Chainsaw Dog in the second half of the show. Were you guys even listening? I don't know if you guys were listening. Please, pay attention to me. Nick, release the Arcania 1 and 2 code. Throw <laughs> it in there. Release the hounds. Yes. Uh, and uh, now everyone has to pay attention to Tara because it's her turn to say things. Don't yes. Bite, don't bite your tongue. It, you'll bite sound tongue. super dumb and they'll all laugh at you. Now I might. I, I don't know if I can help it. It's in my brain. Our old buddy Notch is at it again with his subversive anti-corporate commentary. What a loose cannon. That guy really says what's on his mind. Back in May, he tweeted about his distaste for EA's indie bundle, calling the company a bunch of cynical bastards and accusing them of attempting to ruin everything. And his latest target is none other than Windows 8. Windows hate? Yeah, that's right. He tweeted yesterday about receiving an email from Microsoft asking if he wanted to certify Minecraft for the Windows 8 platform. He tweeted, I told them to stop trying to ruin the PC as an open platform. I'd rather have Minecraft not run on Windows 8 at all than to play along. Maybe we can convince a few people not to switch to Windows 8 that way. Ouch. And if that seems harsh to you, then you're probably a pussy. Either way, Windows 8 has been getting tons of hate recently from other industry people like Gabe Newell, who called it a catastrophe for anyone in the PC space. And Blizzard's design chief, Rob Pardo, who responded to Newell's comments by adding that Windows 8 was not awesome for Blizzard either. Hmm. Guys, the important thing to remember here is that Minecraft will still be playable on Windows 8, as certification isn't a necessary process, unless you guys know another way of filtering out the spirit of Satan. Hmm? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'll stick with my Windows certified apps. Thank you very much. Jeepers. That's a scary <clears throat> story. Uh, we actually had one good question from uh, Rigo001. So where the hell is the Vita version of the Zone Enders collection? I have no idea. They didn't even mention that, that I that I recall. I seriously don't think they I, they didn't talk about that. Um, I would guess that they're holding off a little while because, I don't know, they want to sell the console one just because it's a... They're probably just trying to finish that yeah. up before yeah, they announce Yeah, I mean, if new. you recall, the um, you know the uh, Metal Gear collection came out around this time last year, and then the, the Vita one didn't show up until, like, early this year, so mm -hmm. probably a little while. Uh, last episode, we talked about middle, er, the zombies in the Call of Duty Black Ops, which 
I will admit, kind of got my attention. Sounded interesting. Apparently it was a bus. Today we've got details about some new stuff they're doing with the multiplayer. Now obviously multiplayer is the main appeal of Call of Duty, but there are still a ton of people who don't get into it. I'm one of them because the competition is yep. too intimidating. Uh, Treyarch is actually aware of this, and they've introduced combat training, which is a new way to get hmm. everyone involved. Uh, combat training is broken up into three parts. There's boot camp, which is 6v6 team deathmatch with three bots on each team. The catch is that after players level up to uh, level 11, or 10, after they reach level 11, they are locked out. It's the shallow end of the pool where the babies can learn to backstroke and tread water without the big kids dunking them and saying swear words. Uh, anyway, then there's Objective, which you can play past level 10, but you only get half the experience. It's still got uh, three bots and three noobs on each team, but the game modes are objective-based, like capture the flag and stuff like that. Um, finally, there's Bot Stomp, which puts six players up against six bots and earns them no in-game experience, but can be used sort of as a training area. And Treyarch's David Vonderhaar pointed out that bots do not yell at you if you don't perform well. They don't get upset, and they're not racists. Aww. Not yet, anyway. Work on that AI, guys. Of course, Black Ops 2 isn't forgetting about the hardcore crowd. In addition to a pile of familiar modes, there's also a new fast-paced mode called Hardpoint. Inspired by King of the Hill mode, Hardpoint has players capturing a point for as long as possible before the point is moved to a different location on the map. So you're all hustling around and just shooting each other there. Uh, wager matches are back, but this time they're called party games, and this uh, they include a uh, gun game, one in the chamber, sharpshooter, and sticks and stones. Those are all returning, and Treyarch is also apparently working on some new modes to put into party games. Hoping, hoping bobbing for apples or Ooh. something like that. Pin the tail on the donkey. Uh, of course, if none of those preset modes appeal to you, worry not, because custom games are back, so you can make all kinds of crazy adjustments to your matches. Uh, for the full report on this from someone who knows much more what he's talking about and isn't, you know, tempted to go in the shallow end with his water wings on. Go check out Hamza Aziz's write-up over on Destructoid.com. I know we're all supposed to, like, hate Call of Duty because, oh, it's Activision and they're evil and they want our money, but uh, I'm actually really interested in this game. I mean, between the, the horses and the robot helicopters and the zombies and the Trent Reznor soundtrack and the, uh, the David Goyer story, and then there's, like, a little baby version for dumb people like me who are afraid of getting shot in the face on the internet, so I don't know. I'm accepting their challenge of yeah. getting people who aren't previously into multiplayer into it. You hear me, Activision? They don't hear me. They don't watch our okay. show. That's depressing. All right, uh, Nick, why don't you feed the people a Joe Danger special edition code? This is for XBLA, and I want them to fight over it. Spill some blood in the chat. That's right. There's right. sharks out there. Okay, more news. Uh, while we're on the subject of free things on XBLA, which is like the code we just gave out, Great news for Xbox owners, you're now gonna be able to use your gamer score for something other than picking up chicks at the bar. Don't worry, she'll come around. It'll work, just keep at it. Starting today, Xbox Live Rewards will start offering rebates for marketplace purchases if the buyer's gamer score falls above a certain threshold. Specifically, gold members with a gamer score of 25,000 or higher will earn 2% Microsoft points back on all of their purchases, while anyone with a gamer score of 10,000 or over will get 1% back. Lastly, those of you with uh, gamer scores above 3,000, the losers, as we call them, will get a special gift during the month of your birthday. A special gift with an approximate value of 25 cents or translated into Microsoft points, that's about one knuckle of this giant foam finger. So 10 years and you'll have a whole hand. Not bad. If you want to learn more or participate, you have to sign up at rewards.xbox.com slash my achievements. Hey, here's a question that'll be sure to produce some fun YouTube comments. Who among you has the highest gamer score? Hmm? Leave your humble brags in the, in the chat and we will be uh, mm. We'll be back to discuss more news right yes. after we thank our sponsor. Fight for our entertainment. But mm -hmm. first, uh, considering how this is an internet show about computer games, I know a lot of you guys watching at home are pretty high-tech individuals, possibly even the type of high-tech individuals who might be in pursuit of careers in the tech industry. If this strikes your fancy, you should go check out Dice.com because it is the career hub for tech. They've been helping connect tech professionals with the sort of highly targeted competitive jobs they're looking for for over 20 years. And even better, they've got a sense of humor about it. Check out this clip from the Dice.com Tech Job Mega Show. Roll the clip! Safety first. Gotta say, 
it beats the hell out of circling job listings in the back of the newspaper, right? If you want to see the whole video, check it out over on youtube.com slash dice. And if you want to browse Dice's massive database of job listings, head over to dice.com to find the tech job of your dreams. I actually do recommend checking that video mm -hmm. out. There's a funny part with a horse in it. <laughs> So while I was at the Konami thing last night, eating tiny little hamburgers and being fawned over by booth babes in red stretchy pants, I got to play the TGS demo of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance and remind myself of exactly how stupidly, dumbly fun this game is going to be. Uh, as I've said before, this, uh, this does bear repeating, but the, the best way I can describe this game is it's like Max Payne Fruit Ninja, except it's a beat-em-up set in the Metal Gear universe. And if that doesn't sound appealing to you, then I don't know if we can be friends at all. Look at what I'm doing to that box. I'm just ruining a box. Um, Fuck that box. Yeah, so I've got, a, I've got a bunch of trademark, or it's still got a bunch of trademark Kojima cutscenes, but they're kind of balanced out by just completely ridiculous combat. So as far as, you know, uh, sneaky, stealthy stuff, it's, it's really not so much about that. And it still ha it does have the, the Metal Gear plot, but um, it's a lot of fun. Um, I kind of dig it. Here I am cutting a man in, in, in pieces, which is just gruesome. Mm. Um, I think it's really funny because there, um, there was that great quote when they were first talking about it and how like uh, Kojima was saying he didn't want to bring it to, you know, he, he's like, there are there a lot of very good production teams in North America, but I thought that if I would take this to them, one year I would come back and it wouldn't be a katana, it would be a gun with a chainsaw on it or something. That was a, a nice little nod to Cliff Blazinski. Um, what's funny is that they, they don't have any, any guns or chainsaw guns there. They do have a dog with a chainsaw for a tail, which is, we saw in the trailer, it's this ridiculous dog that jumps around with a, with a chainsaw tail and it fights you, and I got to fight him, and it's uh, it's just completely insane combat. You fight a bunch of geckos, the, the big robot things. Um, there's, it, the demo I played at E3 was, was basically just like, you know, run from point A to point B and maybe slice a few things on the way. This is much more like, you can actually kinda take a, take a more tactical approach. Uh, there's there's a man in front of the camera that, that's actually Vince. Um, anyway, uh, you get rocket launchers. Uh, there's an interesting thing. Uh, you get this this weird kind of upgrade system. There's a cutscene with this guy called the Doctor, who's just this like just cartoonishly evil scientist-looking man. Um, and he's got a whole collection of arms, and apparently his deal is he's collecting arms of cyborgs, and he wants to study the cyborgs. And uh, this is very much a game about cyborgs, if you hadn't picked up on that for some reason. Uh, Hamza just wrote up a post about that. He was in this this weird Skype Q and A with uh, one of the guys from from Konami who's working on this, or one of the guys from Platinum or whatever. And uh, he he found out some some answers. So go check that out over on Destructoid.com. Mm -hmm. Um, that game's almost on? coming out, isn't it? That is coming out on February 19th, I think. Okay, so not that close. Right after Valentine's Day. right before Day. my birthday. Yeah, so if you didn't get any kisses or chocolates or whatever, you can just cut men into I little won't. pieces. Yeah. Nick, give away, give away the rest of the uh, humble bundle codes while we answer some questions. In the dust Because we are ones. nearing the end. Yeah. Uh, got, got a few of them here. Uechi Blue 3000 says, Hey Max, do you think they will make a 2D Metal Gear Solid? It would be cool if they teamed up with a studio that made Mark of the Ninja. That would be that would be cool. that would be rad, but I don't ever see that happening. Um, <laughs> yeah. They are actually. I don't think they're doing it stateside. Everyone is sort of hoping they would, but uh, they just they sort of revealed Metal Gear Social Ops, which is like uh, Metal Gear Acid. It's like card card game turn based stuff, but it's a stealth thing. But that's uh. Like I think it's on the Gree platform, so it's like a social game, but I don't know if they're bringing that over here. So whatever. Uh. Okay, Lucilop says, "Is the Zone of the Enders game good? In your opinion, guys? I haven't played the new one, but it's basically exactly like the old one. It really doesn't even look that. But do you like the advanced like in terms? Of, I mean, it's not really my kind of game. If you're into, you know, a lot of strategy and." and Robots. Sh shooting yeah. guys and robots. I never got really in the like original. It. I just remember when, when, when Zone of the Enders came out, we were just like, Metal Gear Solid 2 disc, ha ha! <laughs> um, but the actual, I know a lot of people got into it, I just, the, the stuff I always liked about Kojima was, was his take on like, um, uh, I guess I guess Western action movie culture as opposed to like just Japanese robot stuff. So I'm, I'm into Japanese robot stuff, but uh, it's too much in space. You know, it's too far out there. I don't even know if it's in space. It just it's too far removed from the world that I know. I like Metal Gear because you can shoot watermelons and stuff. I thought that was neat. The sheltered world of yeah. Metal Gear. Yeah, but uh, the new one it's that is actually an interesting point because it's an HD remake or you know reboot whatever upgrade high high scale re rescale. Right. It's a, it's a re, you know HD collection right. um, that doesn't actually change any of the controls. So, I mean, unless you're playing on Xbox, in which case it's probably just unfamiliar, but uh, as far as playing the old PS2 version, it's not like they uh, updated the, the gameplay, so. Yeah. Well, Wolfwood MK says, do you need to know the history of Metal Gear Solid to understand Revengeance? 
I can't tell you that yet. They've had they had a three, few mentions of stuff from previous games, but uh, from what I gather, this is going to be really kind of following a sort of a separate separate yeah. fresh story. I don't, I don't think you'll need to know it. You might want to know it, it if you get yeah. really into it the series. But I, I mean, I played the demo at PAX, and yeah. I mean, granted, it was a demo. It's meant to be shown to people who pretty have never much played unless it you've been playing Metal Gear since the first one came out for the Nintendo. You probably don't really know everything about Metal Gear unless you. I mean, if you've gone back, it's it's always not made sense, you know. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid came out in '97, and that was that was referencing, uh, you know, the one for the NES, and then Metal Gear 2, which didn't even come out in the states. That was on the um, the MSX2 computer in Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's a it's a it's a sorted. There's there's too much lore there. But uh, this one you can cut people in half, so that's cool. It is cool. I gotta say, that's a very accomplished feeling. Um, this is probably a perfect time to talk about this week's Casual Friday, since we did yeah. uh, an entire episode on sequels, uh, and specifically we also talked about Metal Gear Solid. So mm -hmm. you guys can find this week's episode of Casual Friday over on YouTube.com slash Rev3Games. And uh, this week's new challenger also features a 15-minute segment of XCOM Enemy Unknown gameplay with the developers. You guys did a bunch of XCOM stuff we this week. We have some There's fun more things. Coming. If you're interested in XCOM, and I really hope you are, we've got some good stuff going up next week. Yeah, um, um, also last thing, it looks like the highest gamer score anyone has submitted, or at least the one that they've relayed to us, was Captain Howdy 69 au who said he has 100... 14,830. That's pretty impressive. That's not too bad. You should get like a, at least a 3 to 4% discount for that one. I hope they so. give little party hats out when it's your birthday. They I think really that'd be should. cool. Or like yeah. a pet cake that just bounces around. Like a, I got that pinky demon from Doom right now. Anyway, before everyone gets mad and raises their torches and pitchforks, this is uh this is goodbye, you guys. This is goodbye. It is the rest uh, or it is the end of our episode today. If you guys want to follow us on Twitter, feel free to do so. I am Tara Longest. He is Max Scoville, and the show is Detoid Show. We've also got an official Facebook page. If you're on Facebook instead of Twitter, which I know a lot of you are, yeah. that's facebook.com slash Detoid Show. Mm -hmm. Any, anything else? No, have a great weekend. We love, we love you. We love doing this. Take and we'll see easy. you back here on Monday. So be good.